Back to bonding. What happens if we knock out our own hole and we're a service? So we should be a reliable hole. Everything's properly shouldered. The, the code book uses the verb is shouldered itself. So we're properly shouldered. Uh, we should have everything that we need. Do we still need a bonding bushing? Answer is yes, because 250.92 says that your lock rings and everything must be listed for grounding and bonding. Is this lock ring listed for grounding and bonding? I don't know. It sure looks like it because this one has the ridges. We've all seen, and this one kind of has that, they kind of lean in where you can see where they might actually bite. This might actually be listed for grounding and bonding, but it's up to the electrician to be on site to show us the paperwork. If not, if you don't have a bonding bushing on your service and you don't have lock rings that are listed for grounding and bonding, well then, sorry, buddy, you should have ran a bonding bushing on your service nipple. The service nipple is what we're trying to bond. We're trying to bond the raceway. So if the wire is missing, it's, you'd be surprised, but I've actually seen it with my own eyeballs. The wire is missing the insulation and it's just chilling inside of here. It will energize this nipple because there is no ground source. If we don't electrically bond back to the source, which is why I started with bonding at the neutral, if we're just tied to the meter, you're just going to energize the whole meter and the whole service mast because there is no reference to ground. If we reference this to ground and we bond our service nipple, well, now we can get back to the source to trip the breaker. So that's what it's all about. That applies to your meter can. It could apply to the gutter, the service raceways, the, the tap can, whatever you're doing, you need to make sure that you're bonding and you really should be looking out for sealing above live parts. Let's talk about why everybody thinks that you need to install bonding bushings on any knockout, whether it's eccentric or concentric, whatever it is. And that could not be further from the truth. I remember whenever I was an apprentice and I had a guy tell me, hey, did you know these were required on this air conditioner? Well, that's not exactly true because that air conditioner was only 208 volts. It wasn't 250 volts to ground. So you don't need bonding bushings inside of your disconnects, even if you have an eccentric or concentric knockout. These bonds are raceways. So if you're on a ground wire through a raceway and you need to make the raceway the same value or potential, you can use a bonding bushings on both sides. The code requires you to put bonding bushings on both sides of the raceway and you're going to attach this to the wire. And that way it's almost as if a raceway doesn't even exist. It's just your wire and your raceway are one and you're not going to create a magnet. If you guys were in fourth grade, you might have done the experiment where you wrapped a wire around a nail, tied it to a battery, and you turned the nail into a magnet because of the electromagnetic field. That's what can happen when you don't bond your raceways when you have a ground running through. Because